Look, the baby is saying something. This person is not good. That's what it says, a six-year-old child said, and those words encouraged me. I watched my overconfident husband's expression gradually change. Meanwhile, after giving birth, I felt a new strength within me. I won't forgive this terrible man, I vowed to myself. I'm Yumi, a 32-year-old nurse, currently on leave due to my pregnancy. Congratulations, you're seven weeks pregnant, they told me. It was happy news three years into our marriage, just when we started wanting a child. My husband was overjoyed to hear about my pregnancy. As a nurse, I was a pillar of support for my patients, even through the physically demanding night shifts. While anticipating the arrival of our baby, I had to take leave in my fourth month of pregnancy due to severe anemia. My husband was concerned about my health and agreed to my leave. I planned to return to work once child rearing settled down, but things didn't go as planned. Red figures in our finances again this month, I muttered, scanning the ledger and piles of receipts. I never expected for my husband to secretly switch jobs, cutting our income in half. At the start of our marriage, his income of around $2,000 per month seemed sufficient. However, I was ineligible for maternity benefits during my leave, and he didn't even discuss his job change with me. I had no idea it was commission-based. What can we do? He said. I wanted to scream inside. Despite our halved income, he acted as if nothing had changed. Well, we can manage somehow. Mom used to run the household on $150 a month, he said. But inside, I thought, when was that? With more tax and rising prices, how are we supposed to manage being pregnant? I couldn't cut back on food excessively, and I wished he'd at least cut down on beer and cigarettes. You're taking away my enjoyment, he retorted. When I encouraged him to increase his salary, if it were that easy, no one would struggle, he said sarcastically. What should I do? I wondered. Use your savings or inheritance from your parents, he suggested. Indeed, I had some inheritance, but it wasn't substantial, and I hesitated to dip into it for our child's future. Financial worries often led to clashes between us. He would accuse me, I'm supporting you while you're off work. What right do you have to act superior? Who do you think is earning the money you spend? You can possibly be that hungry staying home all day. Can you save on one meal and make something nice for your husband? He argued. He couldn't possibly understand the impact of limiting my diet on our unborn child. But I lacked the energy to argue back. Nausea and financial worries were real pain. On bad days, I'd spend all day in bed. Then he'd accuse, I'm more of a father working than you lying around. Don't think you can be a mother like that. Sometimes I long to return to my working days, as dissatisfaction with my husband and vague fears for the future slowly consumed me. On one particular day, my sister visited me and asked, Yumi, how are you feeling? How's your health? She brought her child along to check on me. Thanks for asking, sis. I'm doing okay today, I replied. That's good. I remember how tough morning sickness was for me too. But hang in there. It's just a little longer, she encouraged. As I expressed my gratitude for her words, my little niece, Katie, peeked out from behind her. And Yumi, I am cheering for you too. Keep it up. She's my sister's daughter, a bright and intelligent girl of six years. Really, she's become quite the chatterbox, keeping me on my toes, my sister murmured with a twinkle of joy in her eyes. Despite the challenges of parenting, it seemed the small milestones of her child's growth brought her happiness. What's wrong? You seem a bit down. Is everything okay? My sister asked, bringing me back to reality. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm fine, I replied, though in truth, I was overwhelmed with issues with my husband but chose to internalize them. Just then, Katie, with her round eyes fixed on my troubled expression, gently placed her hand on my stomach and said, Andy, your baby is a girl, right? She's going to be so cute. With a furrowed brow, she added, are you worried about something? The baby is concerned too. Really? You can tell? I asked, surprised. Yes, I can hear it from the baby, she replied. 
Katie has had a mysterious ability since birth, something I became convinced of when she was three. Once, when our mother was still with us and was about to go shopping as usual, my sister called her. As soon as my mother answered, she heard the worried voice of my sister and Katie shouting loudly, Grandma, you can't go shopping today. It's really not okay. Overwhelmed by her strong words, my mother decided against going. Later, we heard news of a car accidentally crashing into the entrance of the supermarket. Had my mother gone shopping as planned, she would undoubtedly have been there at the time of the accident. A few days later, when I mentioned this to Katie, she said, in my dream, God told me to protect grandma. Hard to believe, but it seemed Katie had some special ability. Yumi, is something bothering you? You can talk to me about anything, my sister prodded, but I didn't tell her the truth, just mentioning I wasn't feeling well. After seeing her off, my husband returned home in the evening. Did you have someone over today? He asked, looking around the room suspiciously. Yes, my sister came to visit, I replied. Without a job, you shouldn't invite people over without asking me, it's inconvenient. Typical of women to be so selfish. Remember, I'm the one paying for this place, he scolded. My husband was never the type to speak so harshly. When I became pregnant and took leave from work, he changed as if he was a different person. Please don't raise your voice. It's bad for the baby, I pleaded, but he sighed dramatically and said, if you did things right, I wouldn't have to get so angry. The only acceptable answer is yes understand and write a letter of reflection right now i was utterly baffled by his demand for a letter of reflection you're far too arrogant write a letter of apology and submit it otherwise don't expect any financial support he declared from then on he frequently demanded apology letters whether the food was bland his favorite shirt wasn't ironed or when he made mistakes at work whenever he was dissatisfied I was subjected to his outbursts. Writing those apology letters seemed to give him some sort of satisfaction. I struggled with sleep disorders. The dark circles under my eyes deepened, and I lost my appetite. During prenatal chick hips, I was constantly noted for my pale face and insufficient weight gain. Yet, I held on to a fantasy that things would change once our child was born. I endured his late nights and occasional overnight stays convincing myself it was just a matter of patience until the baby arrived. One day, as my pregnancy advanced, I was cleaning the bathroom when a sharp pain struck. I quickly prepared to go to the hospital and called for my husband. Please, take me to the hospital, I begged, but his response was shocking. Then asked properly one more time. His callousness left me speechless. Hurry up if you want to go, he urged. Unable to bear the pain, I begged again once more saying please. I'll never forget this smug smile on his face at that moment. In the car, on the way to the hospital, the pain was so severe I couldn't even cry out. Yet, he whispered, at least say thank you, before dropping me off and heading home. I couldn't stop crying on the delivery table. Why couldn't I receive any kind words even at the moment of my child's birth? Why had he changed so much? Even hearing my newborn's first cry left me more pain than happy. As predicted, it was a girl. Three days after giving birth, my husband finally visited the maternity hospital. Looking at our precious child, he coldly remarked, Babies look like monkeys, don't they? Not cute at all. His words no longer hurt me. My heart had grown numb. You can raise a child alone. I'll support you, so do as I say he commanded as the door opened. Yumi, congratulations. You did well, my sister and Katie said as they entered, their genuine smiles slightly easing my heart. My husband quickly put on a polite face and thanked them. However, as soon as they entered, Katie's expression changed dramatically. Katie, what's wrong? She quietly looked at the sleeping baby. Hey, auntie, babies know everything. They can feel this man is not good. What do you mean? The baby, she feels this man is not a good person. Katie pointed at my husband as she said that. Her eyes were deep, and you could sense her determination. 
What nonsense, Yumi, this child might be a bit odd, my husband said, circling his finger around the side of his head, gesturing towards Katie. But Katie continued without concern. Look, the baby seems to be trying to tell him something. What? That's ridiculous. How can a baby that can't even speak say anything, Yumi, this child is? He started, but I glared at him and shouted, be quiet. At that moment, I felt a strength from the baby, as if it was on my side. Katie, what is the baby saying? It's saying not to trouble mommy. And also, yes, what is it? That man can't truly make mommy happy, doesn't love her, and is useless. What does useless mean? What are you talking about? My husband said, clearly flustered. I could tell he was shaken. Useless means, hey Katie, does your daddy treat your mommy well? Yes, daddy treats mommy well. Does he give mommy and you presents or go out with you? I asked. Yes, daddy does that for us, Katie replied. So, the opposite of that is a man who can't take responsibility, in other words, a useless man, I explained. My husband stood dumbfounded, taking in my words, right? It's embarrassing to be taught the meaning of being useless by the wife he's always belittled. Hmm, so that's what useless means. Then he is completely hopeless, Katie said with a light laugh, and my sister gave my husband a chilly look. Hey, you me. Who do you think you are? What do you mean? I'm just stating the truth. What gives you the right to talk down to me? I'm the one providing for you. I'm surprised. You can only truly say you're supporting someone when you can cover everything with your own income. It's audacious to claim you're supporting me while depleting my savings. I retorted confidently. Women really do become stronger after giving birth. I no longer felt any threat from my husband I once feared. I took this opportunity to disclose all my past hardships to my sister. That's the gist of it. He really was a terrible husband, I said, and my sister confronted him furiously. How dare you do such horrible things to my little sister? I can't believe it. I won't allow this. Be prepared. Her overwhelming presence made my husband collapse weakly to the floor. I forgot to mention, my sister is a lawyer, and her husband is too. I was just being strict with Yumi as a part of her discipline because she was lazy. My husband defended himself. Who? Oh. Before you say something like that, at least try to understand what morning sickness is. Men who can't respect their wives are just no good. My sister replied calmly. As a lawyer, she has a certain confidence and strength. Realizing he couldn't win against her, my husband began to lash out at me instead. Hey. What's with that tone to your husband? Who do you think allows you to eat? Acting all high and mighty without a job, he accused. I took a deep breath and let out an intentional sigh. Start earning some money before you talk. I can work anytime as a nurse. Besides, I earn twice what you do. What gives you the right to act so important with a mere $1,000 in take-home pay? I confronted him. Though he shouted irrationally, this was a hospital. I wish for quiet. I had made up my mind. I've been preparing for this for a long time. Look these. What's this? Can't you read? It's copies of petition marriage and summons from the court. It's not like that. Then what is it? Don't you understand the word divorce? No, it's not that. I could see he was clearly flustered and breaking into a sweat. I wonder why I ever felt scared of this man. It might have been what they call maternity blues. From now on, I'll leave it to the lawyer. Please leave. You're in the way. My husband, at a loss, said, You me, wait a minute, but my sister efficiently assured him out of the room. Are you relieved, Auntie? Katie asked. Yes, thank you so much. I expressed my gratitude. Ultimately, thanks to the lawyer my sister introduced, I was able to divorce my husband. The letters of reflection he had written became decisive evidence of his actions, and I received a suitable settlement for my mental distress. We also firmly agreed on child support, and if there were any delays, his workplace would be immediately notified. He resisted the divorce till the end, but was powerless in front of my lawyer. Why did you become stricter with me after I got pregnant? I asked. I heard that pregnant women become more loving and obedient to their husbands. 
It's time for discipline. You quit your job immediately when I told you, he said. But my resignation was for my own health. You mean, children should have a father. You can still reconsider, he said. I simply smiled quietly in response. In this world, there are fathers who are necessary for their children and those who are better off absent. Now, which one are you? I asked him. His face fell as if he had been brought to the brink of despair. I felt a sense of relief. Currently, my daughter and I live in a flat near my sister's house. It might seem lonely at first glance, but I never feel alone because Katie comes to visit every three days. Andy, are you happy now? She asked. Yes, I'm very happy. I replied. That's good. The baby is happy too. I think you'll make a wonderful mother. Nothing makes a person stronger than tears. She said. I agree. I think I've become stronger. I responded, impressed by Katie's mature words. The baby smiled, so adorable, she said. Absolutely, you're right, we both said, smiling. My daughter's pure smile made me forget the pains of the past. I clenched her little hand warmly, resolute in my determination to ensure her happiness. My dinner isn't ready yet. If you're neglecting the housework, we're getting a divorce, you know. I wonder who he thinks allows him to have meals to eat. Understood. In that case, shall we get a divorce? What? I, having given up on my husband, decided to leave this house. Help me. Why should I? We're no longer related, right? My name is Karen. I'm a 34-year-old office worker. It's been a year since I married Shane. Normally, one would enjoy a happy newlywed life. But my case was different. To be honest, my relationship with my husband isn't very good. The root cause lies in his character. Before marriage, I overlooked it. But he is a typical domineering husband. Quite controlling. Hey, where's the food? When will it be ready? I just got home as well. If you got home earlier, you could have prepared something. What? Are you talking nonsense? Don't you know I've been working hard and just got home? I was at work too. Hmm. Your job is nothing serious, I bet. I think I earn more than you do, boasting about your earnings. You're really a narrow-minded woman. I play an important role at my company. I'll surpass your income soon. Sure, I hope that's true. What, you doubt it? Such audacity for a wife. My husband reacts to every word I say, trying to control me. Fine, I'll set a curfew for you. A curfew? I was surprised by his sudden declaration. We're not children to have a curfew. I'm serious. Be home by 7 p.m. Don't say such absurd things. I might work late because of overtime. No matter how much I protested, my husband wouldn't listen. Quiet, I'm serious. Make sure you adhere to it. A promise is something that is established with the consent of both parties. What my husband was doing was merely coercion. I considered it nothing but a threat from him. A few days later, I came home past 8 p.m. due to work, only to face an unbelievable situation. What? What do you mean? As I tried to unlock the front door, I noticed the chain was on. I panicked and pressed the intercom. Yes? I heard my husband's voice. What is the meaning of this? What do you mean? We decided the curfew is at 7 p.m., right? Huh? You were serious? Of course. I'm always serious, I told you. He says that with such confidence, but his behaviors are childish. I really want him to stop. Stop the nonsense and just open the door. No way. You always get too full of yourself. Full of myself? What are you talking about? I'm saying you always act so conceited when you think you're in a position of advantage. In the end, my husband truly refused to let me into the house. I was deeply shaken by the change in him, wondering why he had become so different from the man he used to be. Our meeting was at a social mixer. At that time, my husband, a successful businessman working for a top company, was very keen on winning me over. He was stable in his career and financially stable, so I decided to respond to his advances. He was polite and respectful, and that didn't change when we started dating. That's why I thought he was a kind and wonderful man, and I was truly happy when he proposed to me. Karen, I vow to make you happy with these hands of mine, so trust me and let's walk into the future together. Yes? Thank you. Let's continue to support each other. I believed that marrying him would undoubtedly lead to happiness. But once we were married, it was quite different from what I had imagined. My husband turned out to be selfish, arrogant, and had a tendency for verbal abuse. 
Not only that, but about half a year after our marriage, he quit his job. You quit your job? Why? Oomph. That company wasn't worth it. They didn't recognize my abilities. Why should a junior get promoted over me? It doesn't make sense. He quit his job on a whim, frustrated about not being promoted. It was a shock to me. I had respect for him as a confident man working in a top company, so I had somehow accepted his verbal abuse. My elite husband suddenly became unemployed. He attended numerous job interviews afterward, but none led to a job. Damn it. Why is this happening to me? I come from a top company. Even though I'm lowering myself by applying here, why don't I get the job? Maybe it's your attitude that's showing in the interviews. Huh? Don't talk like you know anything. Your workplace is a lower ranking company anyway. That's cruel. So that's what you thought. I'm just stating the facts. My husband directed his frustration at me. He had always been the type to control the home, but his verbal abuse had intensified since then. Eventually, unable to find a new job, he settled for a part-time job, working only three days a week, citing job hunting as the reason. As a result, his income dropped to about $700 a month. Yet, he still behaves arrogantly towards me. My view of my has been worsened by the day, to the point of regretting why I married such a person. After that, I continued to lead a life harassed by household chores and dinner preparations, all while listening to countless complaints from my husband, who would return home earlier than me. It felt as if I was dealing with a teenager, and I was physically and emotionally drained. Despite this situation, I couldn't bring myself to consider divorce since we had been married for less than a year. During that time, my husband grew increasingly audacious, eventually setting a curfew for me and locking me out of the house. Why did I have to endure such treatment after returning home exhausted from work and even doing the grocery shopping? When he locked me out for missing the curfew, I was completely at a loss. Normally, this would be the time to go back to one's parents' home, but mine had passed away. I was at a loss for what to do and desperately needed help. After some thought, I decided to call my best friend, Mika. Hello? Mika, is it okay if I come over now? What's the matter? Did something happen? The thing is, my husband won't let me into the house. What? Why is that? Okay, come over quickly. Thank you so much. And with that, I rushed to Mika's place. Sorry for the sudden visit. No worries. What happened? Well, I explained how I had been locked out of the house for being late for the curfew set by my husband. He really said that to you? Yes. I can't believe that. Sounds like an abusive husband. Maybe it's because he's proud of working for a big corporation that he looks down on you so much? Oh, about that. I also told her about my husband's sudden resignation. What? A part-time job? That's unbelievable. How can he act that way when you're the one earning? Yeah, you should definitely get away from him sooner rather than later. But we've only been married for less than a year, and I feel like it wouldn't be right to just get divorced so easily. But Karen, you're not happy, are you? No? My best friend looked troubled, pondering for a moment before making a suggestion. I don't know if your marriage will work out, but how about you start documenting whenever your husband shows his abusive side? You could record it or keep a diary. Really? I want you to divorce him as soon as possible. But if you do decide to divorce in the future, I hope you can make him face severe consequences if possible. Yeah, maybe you're right, right? So I think it's important to keep records. And I'm here to support you if anything happens. If you're in trouble, come take refuge here. Thank you, Mika. My best friend was a great source of comfort and support. And I was truly happy about that. Feeling that I had an ally gave me courage. I used the ingredients I had bought from the supermarket to cook a homemade meal for her as a token of my gratitude. It's so delicious. Karen, you're really good at cooking, aren't you? Really? It's been a while since someone complimented my cooking, so I'm really happy. Reuniting with my best friend after a long time lifted my spirits. After leaving Mika's house, I sent a message of apology to my husband, and after obtaining his forgiveness, I returned home. Have you truly reflected on your actions? Yes, I was wrong. I'm sorry. When I apologized with my head bowed, my husband looked pleased. As long as you understand, that's fine. Be careful next time. From then on, I tried my best to comply with my husband's wishes. Even so, when he was in a bad mood, he easily resorted to insults. My husband repeated words that belittled and looked down on me. Each time it hurt, I recorded it, gathering evidence for when I reached my limit of endurance. My husband was still unemployed, 
merely continuing with part-time work. In fact, it seemed like he wasn't even trying to find a job anymore. He had probably given up in his heart. I was managing to support both of us on my income, and I took care of all the household chores. He complained and behaved badly towards me, thinking he could control me. He must be satisfied with this situation. Dependent on my salary, yet treating me with an attitude duck into emotional abuse. I told my best friend that I didn't want a divorce, but my patience is nearing its limit with my husband's unchanging attitude. I feel like I'm at the end of my rope. How can he be so insensitive? How does he see me? Why did he marry me? Such questions crossed my mind. Then one day, I came home after 7 p.m. to do unavoidable overtime work. Fortunately, my husband was out and hadn't returned yet. So I was able to enter the house without being locked out and started preparing dinner in haste. However, he returned home shortly after. A welcome back. Seeing that I was still preparing dinner, he looked displeased. What, is my dinner not ready yet? I'm sorry, it will be ready soon. Don't lie, you've just started, haven't you? I'm sorry, I've just gotten back. While talking, I noticed a bag from an expensive brand in his hand. While I was working hard, he had been leisurely buying luxury goods. It was a selfish and unforgivable act. He continued to berate me without any regard for my feelings. Do you lack the ability to learn? Or are you intentionally trying to anger me? You incompetent. If you neglect the household, we'll get a divorce, understand. At that moment, my patience finally reached its breaking point. Who does he think is providing the meal he eats? All right, shall we get a divorce then? What? My husband looked dumbfounded. I decided to leave this house. Hey, are you serious about divorcing? Yes, I can no longer walk alongside you. You are superficial, useless, arrogant, and the worst man I have ever seen. My assertion seemed to dye my husband's face with indignation, his whole body trembling with anger. How dare you? You have no right to say such things to me, a low-ranking employee. I have no further need for a woman like you. With those words, he produced a form of the affidavit of the defendant from a drawer. When he had prepared this, I did not know, but it was convenient for me. I immediately signed the form, gathered my belongings, and left. Now, I have no ties to him whatsoever. Feeling refreshed, I headed to my best friend Mika's house. She welcomed me warmly. You've worked hard, now you're free. Yes, it's because I had your support that I found the courage to divorce. I'm grateful. Don't let your guard down. It's not over yet. He has to face the consequences. Absolutely. Thoroughly. I hired a lawyer and filed a lawsuit against my ex-husband for moral harassment. He seemed quite flustered, apparently not anticipating a trial. Why me? And don't mess around. He raged, it seemed. I was glad to have left everything to my lawyer. Thanks to that, I didn't have to face his words directly. My lawyer calmly laid out the facts and presented evidence, and eventually, he seemed to give up resisting. My ex-husband had been telling his parents that the divorce was my fault, but the lawsuit prompted them to press for the truth. After confessing everything, they were appalled and decided to disown him. Now, having lost his support system, my ex-husband faced the challenge of how to live on his own. He continued to live in an expensive flat he had always wanted to live in since he was employed. Even after he quit his job, I had been transferring money to his account to pay the rent. Now divorced, he had to figure out how to manage living expenses and rent, as well as pay me compensation for his abusive behavior. The rent was $1,000 a month, which he couldn't afford on his income alone. In trouble, he called me. Hello, what is it? Help me. At this rate, I'll be lost. Why should I help you? We have nothing to do with each other anymore, right? But we once loved each other, didn't we? That's creepy. What? Don't you realize how self-centered you are? Do you think your actions are already forgiven? Do you understand how much you've hurt me? I'm saying I'm sorry. I'll apologize. So, such an empty apology means nothing to me. You, when I apologize, you get all self-righteous. That's how quickly the truth comes out. You despise me, don't you? Just so you know, my salary has increased. I'm earning more than you did as a full-time employee. What? You used to belittle me for being low rank, but it turns out you were the lower rank. The fact that you're content with a part-time job and haven't found re-employment shows your powerlessness. No way. My ex-husband was devastated to learn that he was inferior to me, whom he had looked down upon. There's nothing more to say. If you contact me again, I'll report you to the police. Hey, wait. 
I declared as much, ignoring my husband's words and ending the call. I had already added his number to the block list. There would be no further involvement with him. I later heard about my ex-husband's whereabouts from my former in-laws. It seems he resolved his unpaid rent with a loan and vacated his apartment. He's now working full-time and living in a cheaper place. The alimony payments to me have continued without interruption. It appears he's working hard with a renewed spirit. However, that doesn't mean I have any intention of reconciling. I am currently sharing a spacious new flat with my best friend Mika. We spend our days having fun chatting, drinking in the evenings, and enjoying a peaceful and fulfilling life. I owe a lot to my best friend this time, so I plan to give her a gift as a token of my gratitude soon.